Hey guys, check this out. So we're in this scene and we're walking around. And if we take our token and pop them up here, you can see as I go from here to here, the elevation changes to plus 10. And, you know, if I drag the same token up here as we approach this like cliff, we can't see over it, but there's a, a way forward. If we climb up here, our elevation just changed to 20 and it exposes all of these new enemies, including enemies that were sort of hidden by the elevation earlier. And we walk around here some more and we see that there's more enemies hidden up here versus down below. And what, what's going on here? First of all, this scene is made from a bunch of AI generated tiles and other things, which if you're looking up in the top corner, you can see the, the, the scene itself being assembled. I gave a little teaser of this uh, earlier this month. This is coming out, or this has come out today in today's release. This is uh, February of 2023. So if you're looking at this and you see this map and you'd like to get it and the other maps came out with the release, they're, they're out. But there's a special module that I'm using today that I haven't shown you guys before, and it's called Elevated Vision. And you can see my, my player has been changing elevations as he's been navigating this map. And here I'm standing at the highest elevation so far, and I have line of sight to everybody who's lower than me. Um, and with the exception of places that are blocked by walls, I have pretty good visibility up here. Well, how do you do this? Like, how do you, how did I make this map work, right? It's a very organic map that, um, that you can walk around in and I don't have sp any special tiles or drawings that make my players go up or down. If you've ever tried to do this with maps where you just want to change elevation for whole areas, it's really hard to do. But with Elevated Vision by the developer Kwok, I think I'm pronouncing that right, this, this, uh, module lets you do this. It works with levels and uh, wall height and other things that you're used to, but it lets you essentially define whole areas. So let me show you what this looks like. So here's the actual wall scheme for this. And you can see it's fairly complicated. There's a reason for that, and I'll walk you guys through it. But if I go to this layer here, you can see all of this these areas shaded in different degrees of red. Well, that is essentially like a, like a height map. It's height data that's filled into spaces to make all of these spaces automatically force tokens to the, the correct level. Now, if you're, if you're flying, it won't force you down. But if you're on starting at like level zero and you start to maneuver through this map, it automatically sets the token height. And this is pretty powerful. If you want to make maps like this that have all these tactically interesting and different terrain variations then this is like really the way to go there's really not another way to do it even with core levels functionality it's really hard to do it with like drawings or active tiles or things like that so i'm going to show you guys how this module works and how you can make these types of maps yourself and that's what today's tutorial is about let's go okay so this is going to be our test scene and we'll go ahead and activate it. And this test scene uses some of the same tiles you saw before. Again, these are generated uh, by me using AI and then did a lot of post-processing work to make them usable, but it's essentially three tiles, right? That's what makes up our scene. These different tiles um, can be changed in different ways, but I've, I've chosen this configuration. And it looks really random, but I'll show you as we approach it how, how easy it is to, to work with these. Of course, you can use this with any scenes. And, and in fact, Kwok just made this work with tile-based scenes, right? It works really well. It has been out of the box with you know a single background image, but in this case, it now works with tile-based scenes. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my background to black, and that gives us this nice mountain with that just kind of fades into the blackness. The reality is, is this scene for us and for our players only goes as far as the scene borders, in which case, it's here and here. So I've got a couple of test players on the scene, but let me show you how I did the walls to start. So you can see uh, what I'm going to use is a function for um, elevated vision that is filling an area enclosed by walls. There are other functions, like you can fill by line of sight, uh, which for me was a little bit tricky, but you guys may have different mileage on it. You can also fill by grid, which is super simple. So you can see this little thing here saying like uh, 
you know, set whatever this is, whatever this is, set it to an elevation of five. Well, if I go here and just touch these grid squares, you can see them turning red and you can undo your, pro your progress here. I'm going to use this fill space by enclosed walls because I find it gives you really, really good control. Now, before I go on, what elevated vision does is it helps create areas which will control your players and your NPCs elevation. What it doesn't do is affect line of sight. So it does a little bit with line of sight, just as far as like shading the map a little bit, but uh, it's not meant to replace wall height. It actually uses wall height in levels to calculate line of sight. So that's why I still have all of my walls in here and I have them set to different, uh, different heights based on the, how I'm going to fill these regions, right? So let me walk you through a little bit of my wall setup and then we'll start filling in these regions with elevation. So first of all, if I'm standing a token standing on this, on this area of the map, I want them to be able to look over the side and move over the side at will, but anything down below um, shouldn't be able to move onto this area. And I'm going to have this area be 30 feet of elevation as I've defined it, um, or as, as uh, you know, I think is the right elevation for kind of this main area. This area here in the middle is going to be zero elevation. The reality is it could be negative as well, but uh, with, with elevated vision, you sort of have to start somewhere in your map at a zero elevation and everything else kind of goes up from there. So I'm going to define this whole area as 30 feet. So I want the walls around it only to go up to 30 feet. There are no walls going up over that area. I just want a, a token to be able to like literally walk off the side and into the depths, if you will. Um, you can see I also have them then as one way walls. I want a token standing here in the outside area to uh, be limited in terms of their ability to walk through or see through this particular wall because they're standing lower than the wall is. And at least I want to, as a GM, be able to control whether they can pass through that wall. So I'll drag their tokens if I want to. Whereas these areas here, which uh, I'll show you the config, there's no movement restriction, no light or sight restriction, really no restrictions at all. I'm just using this as a way to contain an area that I'm going to fill with elevation data. So um, that's kind of one thing is anywhere I want unrestricted movement, they can move unrestricted. So they might make their way. This would, would be like the starting point of the map. And, you know, they're trying to make their way to this elevated area here. So the way they would move through the map is moving down through this area here. They can pop up 10 feet. So notice this goes from 30 to then 40 feet. And they can stand here, which would be 10 feet higher. There's no movement restriction to get onto that little plateau. They could keep moving down this area. And they'll notice when they get to this area that there's something that's 50 feet up, right? So it's another 20 feet up. Maybe they have to make a check to climb that. This is the highest area of the map. It goes all the way to 90 feet. This area drops then down to 70 feet. But you can see this whole area in the middle is higher than the rest of the map. The idea is they make their way around here. And then once they get to this area, they can actually freely pass sort of climbing up this and get to this 40 foot plateau. You notice everything here is 40 feet and then it jumps to 70 feet. And it goes to 55 feet here. The idea is you want to take an area that players are essentially going to stand on, like let's say this top area, and you want to define like how high is that going to be? It's going to be 70. Then you want to trace your walls around that area the way that I have here. And, um, and then if there's a place where it goes to a higher level, you want to trace your walls around, um, you know, where they could like see this wall. So they'll be able to see this wall. I could make it really complicated and try to make more areas of elevation change, but re you really don't need to do that. The way it ends up being for your players is they just walk around this area, but then to actually get up to this wall, you'll have to move them as a, as a GM or not. So, uh, so that's kind of our starting point. And I won't go into detail as far as how I did all of these walls. It's really up to you guys how complicated that you want to make it. But uh, for the most part, you just find an area like this. I want this whole area to be 80 feet. And so I just defined all of its walls by 80 feet. Unless there's a wall shared by a higher area. In that case, that wall is going to be 90 feet. You do also want to carry your walls all the way out to the edge of the map. If you don't, then... Uh, elevated vision won't define that polygon properly and it'll fill more areas. It'll bleed into other areas. I'll show you, and we'll actually see here in a second if I did these correctly 
when we start filling this in. Now, um, ultimately, the reason these are walls and not terrain walls is because I do want them to block line of sight of what's past them. So for example, this player, I don't want them to see another player standing here if they're down below. And again, elevated vision does not block sight. It only creates elevation changes. So you have to make the walls to where they would block sight. If this was a terrain wall and another one behind it, terrain walls don't block what's immediately behind them, right? So they only block um, everything after the next terrain wall behind them. So that's why I'm not using terrain walls. Now you guys can let me know in the comments if you have any better schemes for how to do these, but this is the one that I play tested myself and ran through the map and it really kind of makes the most sense as far as how I want, you know, enemy tokens to appear and stuff like that. Okay, so now that we've defined all of our areas, let's go into our elevation um, tool, uh, elevated vision tool, and I'm gonna go here to the paint bucket. And we're gonna fill space by enclosed walls. And I'm going to set it to 30. And we're going to come in here to this area that I've said is should be 30. And we're going to paint it. And you can see it collided with the edge of the map. That's good. And then it painted the entire area all the way up to here. We'll notice here, this was one I already painted. So if we go to clear, we can actually clear all of the data from this map. Notice you also have the ability to import and export data, which is super cool. Great little touch uh, by Kwok. So let's go back and paint our 30 foot area and we'll go around and make sure that that all makes sense. Yep, that all looks right. I have another 30 foot area here. I'm going to go ahead and paint this as a 30 foot area also. All right, that's looking pretty good. Everything else is outside of the map. I don't really need to worry about it except for this little sliver, which we'll get to. Now I have a 40 foot area, so I'm going to go to 40, paint this area. You can see it enclosed properly. Uh, this is another little 40 foot section. I'll paint that. And let's look for any other 40 foots. This one is 55. This one's 40 feet. You notice I've enclosed it. There we go. And that should be all of my 40s. Now let's look at what's still remaining. This area is 60 feet. Fill that in. Maybe I want to have a, an enemy sitting up there, kind of hard to see out of sight unless you know you're flying. And this area is 50. This area is 90. Here's a 70 foot area. And at some point, I, you know, I may put some bad guys up here, I may put some other stuff up here that, that would be fun to discover. But uh, if you use all these walls the way I'm doing, your players won't see all of the enemies. They'll have a lot of exploration ab ability here. And there's something really cool about an organic um, scene like this that isn't linear. Frankly, somebody in the comments about a month ago said, hey, how do you, you know, it would be nice to make caves that are not, uh, that are actually like caves, like hard to navigate. Um, you can remind me in the comments if it was you. Uh, but it had me thinking it would be really nice to create that. And being able to do this with AI, you can just do so much more sort of instant, interesting terrain that kind of just interlocks that I just found it really uh, a really cool thing um, to try and attempt. Okay, so we've got all of our terrain data. Now, wherever your tokens are, they have to start at level zero. And let me, while we're here, before we go test this, I am going to show you the settings for elevated vision. So if we go into elevated vision, we see we have a few settings. First of all, display elevation shadows. You have none uh, polygons or WebGL. I think it defaults to polygons. Polygons is like the basic way to do shadows and elevation. It's if you're using integrated graphics card um, or you have you know players that just don't have very good cards, you might wanna try polygons. It'll be a little bit faster. I recommend WebGL. It'll use your uh, dedicated graphics cards. Uh, it'll use shaders and other things just to uh, do things like uh, shading this upper area here. Um, and I just found it, it just sort of worked better for me. So, but again, you might want to try both and see um, which ones your players need to do. I don't know if this is a client specific setting. If your players with potatoes can run polygons, whereas everyone else can run uh, WebGL, but uh, go ahead and try it in different scenarios and test it. Automatic token elevation is on by default. That'll set your token elevation automatically when they walk onto the, um, you know, into the area. They have to start on the ground in order for that to work. So I'll show you when you drop your players in, if this is a starting point, you want to start them at 30 feet. 
average token elevation. So when adjusting, uh, auto adjusting, use the average elevation of the token. Um, otherwise, if it's false, use the token center point to determine elevation. I'm not sure what this does. You can play around with it. I think it's off by default. And then the enhanced line of sight calculation. So as it says, it's experimental. It's it's good for like uh, big dungeons where there's lots of enclosed rooms. I think what that means is that if your tokens are within an enclosed room, it'll only calculate sight and elevation within those walls. It just helps on reducing calculation. But you're going to mostly want to leave it off unless you're working in a scenario like that. And if you leave it off, I've noticed if I turned it on, I don't get the behavior that I want in a map like this. So leave it off. So now we're starting at level zero. If I move my, my token, you can see if you did it right, uh, it'll automatically show you what elevation they're going to move to. And so now I'm at this level and my token can run around and you can see what they can see, right? They can see into the abyss, but they can't necessarily see out here. And let's go ahead and reset our fog of war just so we get like pure view and notice I can't see over those ridges, right? I can see over the chasm, but not into this really high area. I still have to uh, navigate the map to a point where I can get over those. Here we're walking up to that little mesa that we set up before. And if I walk onto it, you can see I can access it pretty well. And then it's now visible from a fog of war perspective. I can't see up here in this corner in case there's some uh, enemies firing at me. Um, and here, look, I just accidentally walked off, right? Um, so as you continue to navigate around, I can't see up here, but when I finally get to this area, I am now in a position where I can, um, I can, uh, come up to this area here and we jump up to this one. We're at now 55 feet. You can see I'm getting more and more visibility as I get higher and higher. And then from this area, I can climb the last 70 feet. I still can't see up further, but. I have pretty good visibility from a tactical perspective. I have the ability to see over the entire cavern. I can see everyone and enemies down here, unless there's a wall uh, blocking my sight. Um, I still can't see up to this very, very high area. And in fact, remember this player started, I need to start them at zero in order to reset them and get them to um, you know, respect the elevated vision. Okay, so now I'm at 90 feet. This is as high as things go. Notice I can't hear my sound anymore. Let's make the sound go up a little bit higher. Now I can hear my, my wind um, breezing through the chasm, but I am now at the highest point in the map and I have the most visibility of this map. You can see, I can even see up here into this area. So it's pretty cool. And you guys will have to let me know how you get along with this yourself. But again, this is Elevated Vision by Kwok. And let me know in the comments um, what kind of questions you have as you get uh, into and testing this yourself. But it's given me all kinds of ideas about how I might create uh, much more tactically fluid maps now, now that this is an option. Um, you'll see me come up with a lot more. I've already got a huge pipeline of AI generated backdrops and tiles for other kinds of environments. And this really just kind of opens up the ability to have these really organic maps, these outdoor maps and cave maps and things like that. So uh, that's it. I had to show you guys today. Let me know again in the comments what questions you have. And thanks again, Kwok, for a really cool module. And in the meantime, everybody have fun making your maps.